Hello everyone, I'm Laura McIntosh and this is Bringing It Home. Now we are the best in fresh. We find the hottest chefs, we travel to the best locations, and we will dazzle you with mouth-watering recipes and bring it all home to you. Hello everyone and thanks for joining me. I'm Laura McIntosh and we're cooking it up and bringing it home to you nice and fresh. If you love baking, you're gonna love this show. Bill Corbett loves baking, he's our chef today. We're also talking about one of my favorites, raisins. Not a lot of folks know how they get from a grape to a raisin, so I wanted to show you. We're gonna do that today and a whole lot more on Bringing It Home. Lexus is proud to support Bringing It Home's message of sustainability and freshness. We encourage you to know the people behind your food and to enjoy your pursuit of perfection. In-season freshness is the key ingredient to making every meal taste the best. So here's a look at what's fresh around the country. No matter where you live in the country, whether it's the East, the West, the South, or Middle America, here are my top three picks for what's fresh in each of those areas during all four seasons. Here's what's fresh during the harvest in the East. Grapes, pears, and pumpkins. Look out for heirloom tomatoes, artichokes, and raisins in the West. Southern comfort food, make only with the freshest ingredients like apples, corn, and kale. For you Midwesterners, eggplant, onions, and shelling beans are coming in fresh right now. So now you know, creating easy and delicious meals is a snap. The key ingredient is to keep it fresh. My name is Bill Corbett. I oversee pastry for four properties. The passion for pastry for me is being kind of excited about every day at work and meeting every challenge, learning why things happen, why different foods react differently. When someone has my food and, and is excited about it, that's what I strive for. It's very exciting to see someone be surprised by your food, to try and give them something new that they haven't seen before. Using the fresh produce and what's around us in the Bay Area is, is really important to me. I feel like you can't really cook in the Bay Area without using all of that. When I was asked to be on the show, it was, uh, it was exciting. I don't have a lot of TV experience, so it was a lot of fun to be able to come down here and kind of cook amongst all these raisin vines, and you know, it's gonna be great. I'm excited about it. By being on the show, I hope just to have fun and show people a couple new twists on some old classics, stuff that they can do at home and elevate what they can do with the ingredients they have on hand. Guess what? I've been waiting for this show all year. It's holiday baking and Bill Corbett is with me and he is gonna show us how to make some delicious recipes. And you promised me, because you are an executive pastry chef, so that's a little intimidating, <laughs> but they're gonna be easy. They're gonna be easy, yes. Now look, if you guys can tell right behind us, these are the dried raisins. These are, oh look, they're ready to be harvested. Do you hear them fall? Right, like that? Now the green ones right next to them, you don't think farming is a year-round event? Well, those are getting ready for next year. We're concerned, though, about this year uh -huh. and this recipe. What do you got? Oatmeal cookie sandwiches filled with a little cream cheese frosting. Okay, bring it on, Bill. Let's do All it. All right. So first thing we got is a little soft butter. You always want to have your butter room temperature. This is farm temperature. Farm temperature, okay. yes. All right. yes. <laughs> Best of all your ingredients are really room temperature. Really uh, for, for, baking. for baking? Yeah, for baking. Generally, yeah. Right. And we're gonna add in the, the brown sugar and then our white sugar. And the reason you're doing white and brown? The brown gives that molasses texture and also kind of makes the cookies a little more tender. Could I do all molasses? Uh, your cookies will be softer, that's the only thing. And it's acidic and it tenderizes. That's what also activates the baking soda and all that, so. Do you see why it's so cool to bake? Because there's so <laughs> much behind it. There's a lot. We actually want to start mixing this with the mixer. We just want to get this aerated. We're just gonna whip this because this is where you're getting all your air in, in your cookie and kind of helps soften it a little bit as well. So it's not a hard, crunchy cookie. Once it's light and fluffy, then we want to add the vanilla. Then we're going to add the eggs one at a time. 
Oh, that's easy yeah. for you to yeah, say. Exactly. They're both in there. <laughs> Another one? So, yeah, you can have the other egg now. Am I being too pushy? No, you're doing well. You're doing well. So we're going to slow down the speed, and we're going to start adding the dry ingredients. Okay. So in here, we've got our all-purpose flour, baking soda, and cinnamon. Now we're going to add the oats and the raisins. And look at these beautiful golden raisins, you guys. I love raisins. Just finish it with the spatula at this point so that we don't end up over mixing. Oh, I know, because you don't want to give the beaters away so somebody can lick the beaters. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're just going to mix this till it becomes a nice homogenous dough. Homogenous. Homogenous. So break all, it down. Uh, break it down. All mixed together, basically, because we want to cover this. You can wrap it in plastic, and we can put it in the fridge. You want to let it rest a couple hours. So this is that. Exactly. Let's let everybody take a look at that because. So uh, then this is what you have, you know, after it's been wrapped and refrigerated. Oh, doesn't that look yummy? And then what you're going to do is roll this out, probably about half an inch thick. And remember, the recipes are on our website. After you see these, you're going to want to do them. I promise you. Sometimes it's easier if you leave it in the plastic. When you roll it. Yeah. Cleaning your mess here. Thank you, thank you. Did I'm you a disaster you're right disa now. Yeah, I'm a really <laughs> a disaster. Are you kidding? My kitchen would uh, be done. I'll start working out the corners. You're not just pressing on the same part and rolling this big, long, thin. And then you're going to throw this back in the fridge. You can actually wrap it back up Which again. Which is why you want to keep it in that. Yeah. Perfect. And then once it's set up, then you can pull it back out. Get some parchment paper on a, on a sheet pan. OK, so I want to stop here. I just want to regroup, because we've, we've yeah. you're moving fast. Oh, sorry. sorry. OK, no, it's good. Awesome. So we made this in the bowl. Mm -hmm. We put it in the fridge for until it cools. Yeah, about two hours. Just let it set. Even You can set it overnight. OK, overnight, fine. You can make it ahead of time. Uh -huh. Take it out, I'd say 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, 15, 20 minutes. Just, no, no, that should be fine. Just check it. It should Roll be a little, it. a little bit soft to the touch. Back in the fridge. Yeah. For how long? Uh, and maybe half an hour. OK. And then you're ready to roll. And, and then you're ready to roll. Then okay. you just get a ring cutter. Yes. You can use something like a, you know, like a ramekin or something you have at home. Yeah. Punch these out. And then you can take the extra dough that's left over, and you can re-roll it out again. Could I eat it? You can eat it, too. Uh, <laughs> not supposed to eat raw dough, but I, know. I don't yeah, know about I that rule. I didn't say that, and you're not supposed to no. eat it. Then you can move them onto the sheet pan, and Thick then we throw that in the oven, 300 degrees, just till they're golden brown. OK, so you have some already made. I have some already there. made. I'll go grab them. See, really, that's perfect. Nice really golden brown. Nice. Oh, man. I have to say, I know there's another step, but I'd almost want to eat these. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I have to wait. <laughs> So next is? So next, cream cheese frosting. It's pretty simple. How do we start? We're dealing with room temperature. We want to put the butter into the bowl. And can I just mention this, too? Uh-huh. Don't microwave your butter if it's not at room temperature. No, It don't. changes the consistency it of does. the butter, and yeah. then your stuff doesn't come out right. Yeah, your butter separates, and then when it cools again, it gets harder. So then we're going to add powdered sugar here. OK. Now, if I were really nice, Bill, I would share with you my grandmother's recipe because it's really close uh -huh. to this. But if I told you, I'd have to kill you. <laughs> so I'm not sharing. All right. I'll just <laughs> but thanks for sharing no with problem. us. No problem. <laughs> we'll add the cream cheese. Okay, so now so we're really... going to start using the mixer. So I can see why and now because uh, this would be hard to mix with that. Yeah. Okay. We'll just do it on slow. We don't want it to splash around or anything. Yeah, because it's the only shirt I've got today, yeah, Bill. Exactly. We'll be in trouble, let <laughs> me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> we can add more of the sugar now. And then you can add the rest of the cream cheese now. Honestly, I use this with so many things, carrot cakes, banana cakes, you know, yeah. these cookies. We've prepared some ahead of time, and we've got oh. some inside a pastry bag already, yes. ready to go. I usually put a plain tip in here. Okay. You, don't, you don't have to have a tip. So you can cut the top of your bag and just pipe yeah. it out of a plastic. We're going to flip over three of these cookies. Not four. Not four. Not Need two. Wait, not two. That'd be <laughs> outright. The way then we just have plain cookies, and, you know? We really want some. <laughs> Everybody has to look at how perfectly you bake them. That's so, hard to do. I think it's easy to do. Of but course guess, you do. You know, maybe yeah. that's just. Sometimes yeah. I need to get them that yeah. perfect. The crumble's going to be beautiful. OK, I'm a little crazy about baking. <laughs> you just want to pipe a nice heavy dollop. You're going to let me pipe? Yeah, there you go. Sorry, sorry. No, that's OK. I'm glad you did the first sorry. two. Should I push down hard? You should lift up a little bit. Yeah, perfect. There we go. Got a hangover oh, that good. one. Look at that. OK, there we go. So then we're just going to take the cookies. And we're going to lay them down and just kind of wiggle them until you see it coming in close to the edges. See, yours are much better. Uh, and it's but a good no, trial. You know, yeah. it still looks good. No one's going to turn that down. Yeah. That's it. There That's the hero. There that is go. it. That's what you're going to so, make at home. Because I usually wrap these, and I let them sit for a few hours wrapped. In the um, fridge or room? Just at room temperature, because what happens is the cream cheese then even softens the cookie more. And then uh, you were nervous there, huh? You thought the cookie might snap. And no, I, I, we're, we're good. Oh, he was confident with we're his good. cookie. I will not let anyone cut that in half and share it. You have to eat the whole thing. It is a lot, though. I know, but it's fun. <laughs> All right, we've got more coming up. You thought that was easy? Wait till you see the next one. I can't wait to do more.
they get from a grape to a raisin? We're gonna show you. wouldn't be a raisin show without meeting the guy who puts them in your belly, or in this case, in all of the baking that we're doing today on the show. I'm really excited to introduce to you Steve Kister. He is the farmer, but he is a lot more than that. You're making it possible for us to cook with these raisins. How do you make a raisin? Well, in, yeah, in the, in the old days, they were dried on the ground on a piece of paper, but now they, they take about six weeks. We cut the canes in the middle of August, and about six weeks later, as you get towards the first part of October, they're ready to harvest mechanically. A machine actually drives underneath here, right? we, and they just rain down. So do they shake them? Do they clip them? I mean, how does it go? They, there's actually bars that just, they just beat them, and they, they come off pretty easy, and they drop right into conveyors, go into the bins, and we pick up the bins and take them out. You have to come through and taste it for sugar, like a wine grape? We we check them for moisture because what we what it is, it's mm. just a fresh grape with the water removed, nothing else. Now listen, I'm making sure that what you see here is what you can make at home. And Bill's uh, already trying. <laughs> she's, I'm trying to sneak ones in, yeah, but she's got me. But, he's got uh, me. Yeah. He's got us. But, but we figured it out. We're going to share this next one with you. It's the adult kind of dessert, almost little. Bit. That's right. We yeah. need to mention that. Yeah. So, all right. So let's go through the ingredients. We have. So we have pecan cookie crumbs, confectioner sugar, cocoa powder, honey, golden raisins. I'm so glad there you said that. Okay, and? <laughs> and bourbon. As far as the chocolate goes, how much cacao is in there? Is this like a semi-sweet, sweet? That's just a cocoa solid okay. almost. Like, okay. So it's, it's, so it's not sweet at all. Yeah, it's just okay. powder. There's no sugar there. Now let's explain this, because this is the one I'm like, come on, Bill. Yeah, yeah. So in my kitchen right now, we have a pecan pie on the menu, and we make a pecan tart. Like right. The shell is made with pecan dough. We take the pecan crumbs or the extra pieces of dough after we cut and we bake that off and we, that. we turn it into crumbs. Great. To waste not want not. That's you know? right. So but you could buy pecan cookies if you wanted to right. and grind those up into crumbs. What's in this? So bowl? this is super simple. It's actually a no bake kind of thing. We just have some toasted pecans that have been ground up in a food processor. Toasted pecans on yeah. the stove top. Yeah. Throw them in the food processor. Yeah. Vroom, yeah. That's a little bit wet. I didn't add anything to it. That's okay. just the fat in the pecans, in the pecans. coming out. Okay. Yeah. What do we need to add? We're going to add the cookie crumbs. All right. Really, we're going to add all the dry ingredients at this point. Oh, okay. So, confectioner sugar, the honey, then the bourbon can go in as well right now. In here? Yep. Or did you want to sit? No, uh, okay. I'll take it. <laughs> we got the bottle over here. So. That's right. <laughs> when do I add the raisins? The when raisins we're going to add when it's almost mixed. Okay. Kinda. All right. Actually, right about now, probably. And you good. have one that's done. I do have one that's done. All right, let's so. show them what that looks like. Once it's done, what you do is you take that mixture, put it in the fridge, and let okay. it sit, ideally overnight. Oh, really? Yeah, that'll help the uh, the bourbon kind of soften the flavor. Right now, it's as much as I love it, the bourbon's really. Well, kind it's, of, I was just gonna uh, say, big. man. You can smell it and the heat Oof. that when you're eating it, you know, it's it's a little strong right now. So yeah. if you let it sit Too overnight, strong. it'll mellow out a little bit. Okay. And then uh, also it becomes a little firmer so you can actually scoop them. Okay, great. So Even a few hours is fine. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is just scoop them and then what we'll do is we'll roll them by hand to kind of, to smooth them out. Ah, so. okay, let me try this. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna toss these into the pecans, pecans. and kind of press them in there a little bit. I was bit. just gonna say they're not sticking really yeah. well. You could coat these back in more of the cookie crumbs if you wanted to. Ooh, that would you be know, good too. You could dip them in chocolate, coat them in anything you want. So basically, right now they're finished, they're done. That's it, these are the finished ones here. I think we should taste one. All right, sounds you ready? good to me, All yeah. right, you guys, there's more fun, easy recipes for the holidays. If you haven't started baking, don't worry. We got you covered, <laughs> thanks to Bill. All right, let's try one. Oh, I love this. What do you guys think of the number 95? On a test, it's an A. If your car is 95% fuel efficient, you'd be happy. 95 is a pretty good number. Well, guess what? California raisins, 95% of all of raisins in the United States raised right here in California and 50% worldwide. You are third generation farmer. Right. And how did it start? Actually, my grandfather, during the Depression, he was a farm worker, and he drove tractor and irrigated it on a field right next door, and eventually acquired his first ranch. And then his well, son then, worked? And then his son was a farmer, but he was determined that his kids wouldn't be farmers. Well, it didn't quite trick. work out that way. Yes. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about sustainability. That's been a challenge, because folks don't realize how hard you have to work and the expense. 
keeping this going for generation to generation? We're producing twice as much crop with the same amount of water. So we're conserving water. We're going no, virtually no-till. Uh, oh, it's better for the air. And we may make less passes with the tractor. So it, it, it's environmentally friendly, but you're right. The hard, the hard part is the investment. I like to say you grow them and the sun makes them nice and sweet. That's right. We're harvesting the sun right here. I love it. And this is beautiful. Trendy, this is what's going on. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. One of the funnest things when you're baking is to get that sensation of memory. And I remember in my grandmother's kitchen, her famous applesauce cake, the smells of the cinnamon and allspice. Instantly, even when I talk about it, it brings me right in the middle of her kitchen right now, today. And that's what I hope this next recipe will help you do. Guess what, you're a little bit late because we already started. Bill, tell them what we're doing. So we're making a little yogurt mousse right now. In the pot, we've got cream, sugar, and salt. We're gonna bring that to a boil with a little vanilla bean. Look at how much I scooped out of there. And I'm getting some cream whipped right now. This is the last stage of this part of the recipe. Tell everybody how easy it is to make that. You got an elbow, you can move it. You know, it's pretty simple. <laughs> we're gonna do this recipe for you in stages because there are about four stages. Yeah, so we're gonna be making yogurt mousse and huckleberry parfait. Is this something that you have at the restaurant? Yeah, yeah, we serve it. We've got it uh, at a few places. We're almost there. Now, once this comes to a boil, what do we do? We're gonna strain it into our yogurt. I like a really tangy yogurt. Actually, at the restaurant, we make our own yogurt. Oh, you do? Yeah, it's, it's super easy. Greek style? So, yeah. You know what I'm gonna ask you if I'm at home and I'm doing this at home? Just a plain Greek yogurt just would work? Just get a plain Greek yogurt's perfect. Okay, and this, never watch a pot because it just won't boil for you. It will you. not ever <laughs> boil. Yeah. How's that? That looks good. Don't burn it. So you're gonna strain that through the strainer. We're straining it because you don't want the vanilla bean. Yeah, in case there's any chunks of vanilla bean And there, in there. were, because that yeah. thing was loaded. Yeah, press it through. I'm not a waster, man. Yeah, I gotta exactly. get all the little yummies there. We're just gonna whisk that together. And then we're just gonna fold in the whipped cream now. We're just gonna pop that into a pastry bag. No special tools required, really. If you don't have a pastry bag, get your plastic bag, put it in there, and just cut off the end of it. This mm -hmm. is nice, though. So, we've got a little our glasses. different consistency. I might borrow one of these, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> we're just gonna pipe a little bit into our glasses. I so. thought you were gonna bite it off. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I do. That. Yeah, that's one way to do it. You want to fill the glass about, you know, maybe a little over the halfway mark towards the two-thirds mark. And that goes in the fridge, let it sit for about four hours, and then we'll get to the next step. Next step, it's a four-hour thing. So make this first, let it sit for four hours. You're so lucky you don't have to wait four hours. Really, Bill, I, I have to tell you, and this to some people I think is nerve-wracking, uh -huh. but when you're making candy or doing mm -hmm. things and you have to wait for the temperature to rise, mm -hmm. I love watching it. It's like, come on, yeah, go. Yeah. <laughs> like sweet pita, you can get there, you can do it. It's, I love it, really. Uh -huh. And this is just... Right now it's just sugar and water. Right, and we're letting it get to... We're taking it 242 degrees softball stage. And so, it says that. Yeah, it does. Okay, so we've got a little bit of time here. Now what are we doing? How are we putting this all together? So we're making a meringue without fresh egg whites. So oh. We've got powdered egg whites and a little bit of uh, cream powdered of tartar. Powdered egg whites? Yeah. I'm not so, gonna make those at home. You can buy them at home. And then we've got a little salt and that's gonna go in near the end. Well, I'm watching the candy thermometer. Okay. So now we've got the, the powdered egg whites and the uh, cream of tartar into huckleberry puree. Oh, nice. So I puree with a little water, thin it out a little bit, and we just wanna get this homogenized again into here. And then when that sugar gets to softball stage, we're gonna, Man, we're gonna pour it in I'm guarding it with my life right. because burnt candy or burnt at this yeah, stage, yeah. you have to start all over. So I'm yeah, on guard. Yeah, don't, don't think you can proceed. We're at 220, right. waiting for 240. About 2.30, what do you see? 2.30, almost 2.30, yeah. We are just below softball stage. All right, and you this is You wanna go our... play around? Yeah, all right. Um. We're not there yet. Finally! <laughs> okay, and just pour it in All there. right, so yeah, I'm gonna get this going, then just pour it in a thin, steady stream. Oh my gosh, what this is doing, Bill, with the aroma is uh -huh. unbelievable. Yeah, you can smell all the huckleberry now. It's a... Yes, I'm yeah. your huckleberry, <laughs> I love it. So now we're gonna whip this to a full stiff peaks. This recipe, you can kind of take almost any juice and you know change it out. Your suggestions were pomegranates. Cranberries would be really great. You know, some people like chopping and cutting and being a chef, mm -hmm. and I like baking, because at the end of it, it's gonna be nice and sweet treat. <laughs> I'm gonna bring up the uh, glasses, right? Is yep. it time? Yep, and then we just gotta put some in a piping bag. And, and voila, we have a piping bag. But remember, 
No special tools required, you promised, and you were right. Maybe a candy thermometer, though. Yeah, but you can get that at any department store. Yes, you can. Yeah, ten you bucks. Can. Yeah. I'll be honest, I bought that one on the way here. Did I, you for really? I forgot oh, mine. Oh, that's great. <laughs> there we go. Look at how beautiful that is. You want me to take those, sir? Sure, that'd be great. I've got those, chef. So, take it at home. <laughs> you see how it's holding a stiff peak there? Yeah, perfect. That's what we're looking for. That, which is what a meringue does. Exactly. Hey, I've got to try this. I'm sorry. Yeah, go for it. Oh my God. Bill, that's so good. So what we're gonna do now is we've got our yogurt mousse. We're yes. gonna take our, our huckleberry compote. Just lay in the huckleberries. For the lemon streusel, you wanna do that right before you serve it so it okay. doesn't get soggy. I'm going hog wild, man. I'm filling all these all right. cups. This is so fun. And then we're just gonna pipe like a nice fat dollop of the meringue right on the top. Oh man, that looks good. We're tasting That's this. It. I'm sorry. <laughs> we worked way too hard at this. Can I pipe one? You can pipe one. All right. Hold it straight up above. It's better? Yeah, just like that hold it still and it kind of forces the meringue out into that kind of domed shape. But yeah. Rather than a yeah. Yeah, stack. Yeah. Stack. But you or can dome. do whatever you want, you know? <laughs> it's not gonna change how it tastes. So. No, it's not. And that's what we're gonna so. do right now. These are easy, fun recipes. You can get them on our website. Bill, here's your spoon. Thank you very here's much. Here's mine. Thanks you guys. Happy holidays and bake away. You ready to dive in? I am. Oh I got a lot of those huckleberries too. Look at that. Oh my god, I'm in heaven. We're talking holiday baking, and I wanted to make a really easy treat for breakfast. It's so simple and fun to do with ingredients you probably have in your pantry. What we're gonna make is oat breakfast bar. We're gonna start with good old butter and about a half a cup. So all we're gonna do is melt this. This is a one pan quick recipe. Oh, there's nothing better than the smell of melting butter in your kitchen through the holidays. It smells so good. Now I'm gonna take it completely off the burner just because I don't want any residue heat. And then we add all of our ingredients. Oats, some crisps, sugar, we have cinnamon. You're thinking, okay, there was butter in there, but it's not binding together. We have a really great ingredient that I love to use all the time in baking, which is honey. That will bind it all together. But first, we're going to add a little bit of vanilla extract, a little bit of flour, our honey. Of course, my family grows walnuts, so I have to use walnuts, along with a little bit of fruit medley, some raisins, some cranberries, some cherries. We're gonna put it in my nine by 13. There you go. In the oven at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes, and voila, an instant breakfast. OK, you can see I pulled it out of the oven. I've already started cutting it up and putting it on a plate. Make sure when you take it out of the oven, you let it cool. It may take up to two hours. The recipe is on our website, bringingithome.com. Another little tip, when you're cutting it, you have some crumbles, and, and trust me, you will. Don't throw those away. You can use them for snacking, or you can put them on top of yogurt or ice cream. They're delicious. Happy baking. questions and someone out there has a sweet tooth. The question is, what can I do with whipped cream? What is something different? Give me a neat idea. How about flavored whipped cream? And the fun part about this is you can pick your favorite flavor, whether it's chocolate, lemon, almond, peppermint. Choose your favorite and let's begin. All you need is two cups of heavy whipping cream. You're gonna add that to one half cup of sifted powdered sugar or confection sugar, it's the same, but no lumps, so sift it. Make sure it's nice and fine. And then you're gonna add your favorite flavor. Since mine is peppermint, we're gonna go ahead and use one eighth of a teaspoon of pure peppermint extract. Beat that together until it forms high peaks. And use this on all your favorite desserts. Sometimes I like to eat it on its own. Enjoy.
next time on Bringing It Home. Everyone needs a little Southern comfort food now and then. So my friend Chef Dean Dupree is serving up quite a spoonful with a few Southern inspired recipes sure to warm you up on those cold winter days. We'll also get a lesson on how some of our favorite winter veggies are grown. And of course, we're cooking it up just for you, nice and fresh. Lexus is proud to support Bringing It Home's message of sustainability and freshness. We encourage you to know the people behind your food and to enjoy your pursuit of perfection. I can suck. This is terrible. You have to. Uh, stand by. Stand by. Oh, here we go. I got, okay, we're a, ready. Okay. There's an on switch. <laughs> Good. Uh, so that's why we're bakers? I'm a professional. Looking for simple ways to keep it fresh at home? I've made it easy with my new cookbook, Laura McIntosh from the Field. You will discover delicious recipes selected from some of the world's finest chefs. You can also order DVDs of the show you've just seen. Just for you. Nice and fresh.